and 435 together, if you would, 435. Let's stand as we sing. What a wonderful change in my life had been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. 435. On that first together. What a wonderful change in my life had been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy are my soul like the sea billows roam. Since Jesus came into my heart. On that third, I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure. Since Jesus came into my heart, and no dark cloud of doubt, now my pathway obscure. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows. shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart and I'm happy so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart floods of joy singing this morning. Good to see you in the service today. Looking forward to a wonderful Lord's Day morning together. Appreciate you making the effort to be in church today. Let's start with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we bow before you in prayer. We thank you so much for another Sunday you brought us to and another Lord's Day. And uh, thank you for the wonderful songs we have to sing this morning. Thank you, Lord, for what the choir sang already. And it's a beautiful day for the Lord to come again. It's a beautiful day for us to gather together here with the people of God and sing what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. And Lord, I pray if any in the room today has never asked Jesus Christ to be their Savior, that today would be the day of their salvation and you would draw them to yourself. I pray Christ will be lifted up, that he'll be exalted in our service together here today. May you be pleased with what goes on in these next few moments we spend together. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All right, you may be seated.
right, would you turn with me to please uh, number 135, 135, Hark the Herald Angels Sing Glory to the Newborn King, 135, you can remain seated as we sing, uh, sing one, the first, second, and last stanza together. Hark the Herald Angels Sing Glory to the Newborn King, Peace on Earth and Mercy. singing this morning. Now have some announcements for us. You've listened carefully. 5.30 tonight, we have a Christian growth class, and uh, that's for all. If you're a new Christian, you ought to come. If you're an old Christian, you're welcome to come, and uh, tonight we'll talk about the Bible, and uh, just where'd that Bible come from anyway, and uh, how did it get together, and uh, what is its purpose, and we'll help you understand and learn a little bit about uh, the Bible tonight at 5.30, then 6.30 tonight, back here in the auditorium for our regular evening service and uh, we look forward to a great time together this evening and uh, we always have a great service on Sunday night. A week from tonight the children will be having their uh, Christmas play and uh, that'll be at 5.45 on Sunday night so make a note of that uh, right before the evening service and so uh, 5.45 next Sunday night December the 11th. Ladies don't forget your ladies night out Christmas uh, meeting Treasures of the Snow is tomorrow night 6 o'clock over in the Fellowship Hall. And uh, you're going to have a great time. Remember to bring your white elephant gift. I'm spo- I understand you're supposed to bring that wrapped, okay, wrapped and ready to go. And uh, you'll have a good time with that. And, uh, and listen, here's how it works. If you don't bring a gift, you don't get to participate in that, all right? Got it? Okay. Uh, sometimes you'll, I just won't bring anything. I'll just go home with something. That isn't how it works. The, that's, that's the government, but that's not the church, all right? And... Uh, Sorry about that, but uh, everybody you get to participate, you bring something in, all right? And it's not something you have to go buy, just something you have around the house that you don't want. And uh, that's kind of how that works, and uh, then you get that off on somebody else. But uh, it's a fun time. You're going to have a great time together, 6 o'clock, and probably be done around 8.30 or so, and uh, you'll just have a delightful time uh, tomorrow night. A lot of fun things planned there. Plenty to eat. Don't have to have dinner before you come. Uh, you'll you'll be well taken care of, all right? And then remember the adult Christmas banquet is uh, December the 12th out at Dear Dutchman uh, in Plain City. If you haven't got your ticket yet, you see Carol Coleman uh, after the service uh, today and uh, get those Wednesday night, the 7th is the deadline, all right? And uh, we have to let them know what we have coming by then. All righty. And I think that's all I've got right now. 
Let's take a moment and we'll welcome any guests we have with us today. Anybody here today for the very first time? You put your hand up and uh, we'd like to meet you, find out who you are and where you're from. Any first time visitors here this morning? Looking around, I don't think I see anybody. All right, very good. Let's take a minute. We'll hear from the choir. Let's go to 287 together, 287. If you're from sin or longing to be free, look to the Lamb of God. 287. We're going to sing that first, third, and last together. If you from sin are longing to be free, look to the Lamb of God. He to redeem you tied on Calvary, look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God, look to the Lamb of God, for He alone is able to save you. Look to the Lamb of God. Are you a weary? Does the way seem long? Look to the Lamb of God. His love will cheer and fill your heart with song. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. For He alone is able to save you. Look to the Lamb of God. Fear not when shadows on your pathway fall. Look to the Lamb of God. Enjoy your sorrow, Christ is all in all. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to the Lamb of God. For He alone is able to save you. Look to the Lamb of God. 
Amen. Great singing this morning. Let's go to 146. 146. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight to a uh, for all the earth, or all the earth. One, four, six. Let's all stand together as we sing this first verse. Children, you can be dismissed to junior church. Children, you're dismissed to junior church. Let's sing that first together. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight for all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, worship Christ the new born King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with men is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come. Worship Christ, the newborn King. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. Sage has leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the On that last, let's sing it together as you find your seats. Saints before the altar, bending, watching, long in hope and fear. Let's sing that last together. Saints before the altar, bending, watching, long in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. All right, be seated if you will. Have our offering now. The ushers are coming. We'll get our offering this morning. Give us, God has blessed and prospered you. And. 
a reminder, now two weeks from today will be the 18th of December, and we'll have our Christmas offering on that day, a special Christmas offering over and above the normal giving, and uh, we're uh, collecting for a couple things. We, we mentioned the piano. There's a electric piano that we're trying to get there to work downstairs for our choir, uh, the one down there. Because of the, the, the constant change in the temperatures, it's very difficult to keep a piano in tune and such down there, and that one is uh, pretty rough and uh, been that way for a while. So uh, we can, Brother Bob has located a, a one that he can get for under $1,000. And uh, then there's some, there's a, there's a easel and some other materials, and I'll say more about it maybe this evening, that we could get for the uh, Jarvises down in Honduras uh, at the orphanage. And uh, we, we want to try to purchase that. I think that's about $200 uh, for everything. And uh, we'll just add that into our offering for that day and be able to get that for them and send it down to them, okay? So but that'll be the 18th. So pray, ask God what he'd have you to do on that special offering day, and that'll be great. All right? Let's pray for the offering this morning. Brother Paul Abel, lead us in prayer, please. Let's pray. Our right, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for the health you've given us to be able here to hear the word of God preached. We pray that you'd be with the pastor that you'd Give him the message that each one of us would need and, and uh, be able to use in our daily lives. We ask for the offering that you've given us to give to you, give back to you, and we pray that you'd, each one of us do give just what we, you're supposed to give and pray that you'd use it in a good way. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible this morning, if you would, please, to Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3, please, for our scripture reading. Proverbs 3, and we're going to read verses 5 through 10, verses 5 through 10. I'll begin on verse 5, join me on verse 6, I'll read 7, we're together on verse 8, we'll alternate until we end together on verse 10 of Proverbs chapter 3. And as we usually do, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And I'll begin on verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and morrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture here this morning. And I pray, God, that you would continue to make our hearts ready to receive the truth that you have for us today. I want to thank you for the Bible, and thank you, Lord, for uh, giving it to men of old. 
And Lord, they were obedient and wrote your words down and you've preserved them and kept them that we can have copies of your word this morning. And I pray, God, that each of us would have ears to hear what you'd want to say to us today. I pray you'd bless the special. And I pray, God, it would continue to make our hearts good ground that the word of God can fall into and will bring forth fruit in our life. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we bow before you in prayer now. We thank you, Lord, for this time of year where we focus on the birth of your Son, that you so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us now this morning as we open up your word and look again at a truth from your word, that Father, the word of God will do the work that you promised it would do. You you said whenever the word goes forth that it would accomplish your purpose and your will. And I pray that each one listening this morning would mix what they hear with faith that uh, you could work in each one of our lives that which is pleasing in your sight. So have your will and way, Lord. Help me, please, as I bring the truth and help the folks as they listen today. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. I... <clears throat> Your Bible's open to a familiar passage in Proverbs 3. Most of you are very familiar with verses 5 and 6. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about this idea of trust. And there's three, actually three imperatives we're going to look at in Proverbs 3 this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that, are, that are necessary for a believer. You know, trust is always an issue. Someone says you should never trust anybody that says, trust me. Uh, I don't know about that. I know this. I never trust a politician who says, trust me. 
Uh, I'm sure of that. Uh, someone says you never trust a restaurant that advertises mom's good home cooking. Uh, never trust someone who says, I'll never tell anyone else. Probably the most wasted words in English language are, now this is just between you and me. Okay? Uh, never trust a used car salesman who says, this car is in great running condition. Never trust a preacher who says, this sermon won't be long. What? <laughs> How'd that get in here? Never trust, a, never trust someone that says, the check's in the mail. Yeah. Never trust a dog owner who says, don't worry, he's never bitten anyone. Mm -hmm. Never trust, I like this one, this is true. Never trust a dentist who says, this will only hurt a little. <laughs> Amen to that, huh? You know, most of you have had the experience with, with small children of, uh, you know, setting them on a counter or setting them on something and then having them jump to you. Uh, and at first they're a little scared to do that and hesitant to do that. And then once you kind of convince them to do that and you catch them, then they think that's the greatest thing since, you know, uh, banana pudding. And uh, so you, you hardly, you'll hardly will get them set back up again and they're ready to what? They're ready to jump. You better be ready because they're ready to go. I was thinking about that. Uh, and, and listen, why, why do they jump? Because they trust you. I was reading, thinking about that, and I read a story this week about a fellow who was out <clears throat> climbing a mountain with his son. And, and literally, they were going up the side of this mountain, and he said he, he stopped as they were coming back down the mountain. He said, I stopped, and I looked back, and my son was on this little ledge uh, above me, and I just I turned around, and he said, Dad, and here he came. He jumped, <laughs> and I caught him. And I, and I set him down, and I said, Zach, give me one good reason why you do that. And he said, because you're my dad. <laughs> huh? And he had that much trust and that much confidence in his dad. Now listen, no, look at Proverbs 3. Look at verse number 1. What's the first two words? My son. Who's Solomon talking to? He's talking to his son. He's talking to his boy. He's talking to his child. Okay? And, and listen, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you become a child of God. And He becomes our Heavenly Father. And that's the trust and the confidence that we're to have in Him. Ephesians 5 and verse 1, Be ye followers of God as dear children. So the Bible likens us to being children of God sons of God, if you will, and, and be able to trust God. Now, the question comes to you today and to me, how much do I trust God? How much do I trust my Heavenly Father? How much do confidence do I have in Him? Do I... The more the child jumps and you catch them, the more confidence they have in you. The more you obey God and you trust Him, the more trust you have in God. The more confidence you build in God. Now I understand as a child of God, as a believer in God, yet do you realize something this morning? That you don't own anything. And I don't own anything. I know sometimes we use the expression, you know, that's my house or my car or these are my clothes or this is my whatever. But we know when we say that, it's not really true. Now, in some cases, it's, it's not really your house because you're paying the bank for it or the mortgage company. It may be your car. You may own that free and clear and not pay anybody for it, but it's still not your car. Because when... when, when I became a Christian and I became a child of God, I realized nothing is no longer mine. Nothing I own is any longer mine. It all became the property and it all belongs to God. God owns it all. I, 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 he entrusts it to me and He entrusts it to you and we manage what He gives us. The Bible has a word for that. Does anybody know what it is? Steward. It's called a steward. It's called stewardship. A steward is someone who manages 
or takes care of the things that belong to somebody else. Okay? And that's what all of us do. See, God isn't God is is concerned about what you put inside the offering plate today, but God is also concerned about how you manage everything that's been left outside of the offering plate. Because it all belongs to him. And so we're we're stewards, we're managers. And that's what I think Solomon is getting across to his son here, his child about being a steward and, 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 and what he needs to have in his life to be a good steward of what God's given to him. And there's three simple words we'll draw our attention to this morning <clears throat> that'll help us. The first word is trust, verse number five. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. So we're going to trust in the Lord. And notice, how do we trust in the Lord? With all our heart. Your entire heart, not a part of your heart, not just some of your heart. Hold your finger in Proverbs 3. We'll come back to Proverbs 3 and look over at Hebrews chapter 13, would you please? Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13, and notice with me, if you will, verse number 5. Hebrews 13 and verse number 5. If you're there, you can say amen. Okay? Let your conversation, now your conversation in Bible language is not just what you say, but it's how you live. Okay? And so it involves everything, not just our talk, but our walk. Let your conversation be without what? Covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. So God says, listen, let your life be without covetousness. You know what covetousness is? Wanting something that someone else has. Wanting something that somebody else has. I want that. I want one. And there's never, listen, there's never a time that's more evident than this time of year. People know that somebody else is getting something for Christmas or somebody else is getting something as a gift. They, well, I want one. Now, we're not six and seven, so we don't say that in those words. But we're thinking it. I'm going to get me one of them. Covetous. We don't have to operate on the principle of being covetous. Now, here's why. Notice what it says. Be content with such things as ye have. Does the verse end there, church? No. For he hath said. Who's he? That's God. That's Jesus Christ. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man, can, man shall do unto me. He said, listen, I'm going to be content with such things as I have. I'm not going to covet after something else because, listen, the Lord's my helper. And I don't fear what man can do to me. The Lord's going to help me. If the Lord wants me to get that, He'll help me to get that. But I'm not going to look to me. I'm not going to scheme and I'm not going to devise. I'm not going to covet. I'm going to let the Lord do that. I'm going to let the Lord bring it to me if He desires for me to have it. The Lord is my helper. If I'm not relying on the Lord, and we'll come to this, if I'm not relying on the Lord, then I'm relying on me. Okay? And, and your trust has to be in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You don't have to have covetousness because the Lord is your helper. I don't worry about man's economy because the Lord is my helper. I don't worry about interest rates because the Lord is my helper. I'm not worried about the unemployment rate because the Lord is my helper. I don't worry about the stock market going up or down because the Lord is my helper. That's not, that's not who provides for my needs. God provides for my needs. And I trust in Him with all my heart. It's, it's, never, it's never a mistake to trust the Lord with all your heart. It is always a mistake to distrust Him. I can't trust in things. I can't trust in possessions. I cannot even trust in man, including myself. The trust must be in God. D.L. Moody said this, Trust in yourself and you're doomed to disappointment. Trust in your friends and they'll die and leave you. Trust in money and you may have it taken from you. 
Trust in your reputation and some slanderous tongue may blast it. But trust in God and you are never to be confounded in time or eternity. That's good. Well, preacher, you know the phrase, God helps those who help themselves. You understand that's not in the Bible. Okay? That's, uh, it's not a biblical truth. The truth is, you know what the Bible truth is? God helps those who can't help themselves. And, and, and it's not a matter of you trying to do more, you trying to try. No, it's a matter of you trusting God more. Boy, that's quiet. Hmm. And the way, you, listen, you can't do that if you're leaning to your own understanding. But if I can't trust God for my money or my family or my place to live or for my possessions, how can I trust Him with my soul? How can I trust Him with my eternity? Seems kind of silly, doesn't it? My, listen, your, your level of trust in God ought to grow as your years serving Him grows. You ought to trust Him more. We're all familiar with Daniel when he went into the lion's den. And Daniel chapter 6. Did you know Daniel by that time was somewhere, uh, from what I understand from reading, he was probably somewhere around 90 years of age. He wasn't some spring chicken in there. Okay? A 90-year-old man. So, oh, he wasn't some 25-year-old thinking, I ah, bring the lions on, I can take them. Hmm? No, he knew he'd be an easy prey. But see, his, his trust was in the Lord with all of his heart. When the king came to the mouth of the, the, the lion's den that next morning. He didn't say, Daniel, were you able to hold them off? Daniel, were you able to take care of those lions? No, he said, Daniel, is thy God whom thou serve continually able to deliver thee? He knew who Daniel was trusting in. So the very first thing, Solomon says, Son, here's your trust. Your trust has to be in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding because when you lean to your own understanding, you won't trust in the Lord with all your heart. So the first quality is to trust in the Lord. The second quality we'll look at this morning is verse number 6. Notice the Bible says, In all thy ways, what's the next word? Acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. So secondly, we are to acknowledge the Lord. You're to acknowledge the Lord. With all of our heart we trust, but we acknowledge Him in all of our ways. We trust with all of our heart. We acknowledge in all of our ways. Our ways are our time, our talents, our treasures. God doesn't just want your trust. He wants your ways. He wants the things that make up our life. Somebody said, or I read this week, people have given, listen, $244 billion to non-religious charities in 2015. That's cancer, heart disease, march of dimes, etc. 244B with a billion. Okay? That's, that's people acknowledging what's important to them. Let me ask you a question. What, what, what is important to you? And I can tell you how we know what's important. We just look at your bank account. That tells you, that tells everyone what's really important to us. Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's how we know what's important. Our men and women, boys and girls, hearing about Jesus Christ and receiving Him as their Savior, is that important to you? I believe that's the dearest thing to the heart of God. That folks would hear about Jesus Christ. That folks would come to know Him as their Savior. And listen, if we, if we give money to feed them and clothe them and, and educate them and try to, try to do things for them, but we never give them the gospel of Jesus Christ, we fail in our mission. We fail them miserably. I don't want someone to have a nice coat and a, and a full stomach and, and, and a great education and die and go to hell. They need to know Christ. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. Acknowledge Him means be aware of Him. And that's difficult if you become self-sufficient when you're not aware of Him. 
That's where America is. We're not aware of him. For the first time ever last year, 2015, Americans spent more per month dining out than they spent on groceries for home. The average American family spent $340 per month eating out. I know some of you this morning are thinking, well, I think we might be above average. And some of you may be thinking, boy, I wish I was average. But that's a lot of money. I mean, think about this. And it's not, listen, oftentimes it's not eating out because there's nothing at home in the cupboard. No, there's food. There's food in the cupboard. There's food in the pantry. And we still go out and eat. We've been blessed abundantly. Let me look at, look at a passage in the New Testament with me, will you? Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. You're familiar with this fella. Luke chapter 12. Jesus gave a parable. And he's talking about how, well, a fella came to him one time and said, tell my brother he's got to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus said, beware of covetousness. A man's life consisteth not the abundance of things he possesses. So that's not what life's about. And to illustrate that, verse 16 of Luke 12, he gives a parable. Verse 16, he gave his parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought, where did he think, church? Within himself. Saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Here's a, here's a man, Jesus said, he, his, his ground brought forth plentifully. He, he would look and say, well, I'm, I'm just a prosperous man. And all he did was say, he thought to himself, he said, here's what I'm going to do, here's the plans I'll make, here's the buildings I'll build, here's the, 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 the investments I'll make, here's my plans for the future. And there's no thought of God anywhere in the picture. And before you think, that's terrible, I shouldn't live that way. Wait a minute. How many times, how many plans every day do we make and never consider God at all? We don't think about if we want to go out to eat, just say, hey, you want to go out to eat? We don't ever stop and think, God, do you want us to go out to eat? Did it say in some of your ways acknowledge Him? Did it say in most of your ways acknowledge Him? In all of thy ways acknowledge Him. He just had no, no He didn't acknowledge God in any of His ways. But before we're too hard on Him, we have to look and make sure that we're not guilty of that often. Have you ever acknowledged God as to whether you ought to be in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night? Or is it just what you think you should be? Boy, that, that's quiet in here, isn't it? In all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct your path. The, the, the context seems to think, listen, if I don't acknowledge him in all my ways, he's not directing my path. I'm directing my path. And I tell you what, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It won't end well if I, if I follow my plan. So he says, here's, here's the qualities. First of all, trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. Trust in Him with all your heart. Let's look at the third one back in Proverbs chapter 3. The third one is verse number 9. First three words, what are they, church? Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with thy substance 
and with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new line. Trust in the Lord with all our heart, acknowledge him in all our ways, and honor him with all that we have. Honor him with all that we have. That's our substance. All thine increase. When it comes to honoring the Lord, that means more than putting a fish symbol on your car. Okay? It means more than, than you just putting a bracelet on your wrist. There's more to honoring God with our life than that. It's honoring God with all that we have. And like I mentioned earlier, it's not just what we give. It's not just what we give to God. It's what we're doing with what's left over after we give. That's important that we're, we're, we're honoring the Lord with all our substance, with everything that we have, the first fruits of all our increase. Now listen, God involves us in doing His work. He wouldn't have to. Let me ask you a question. Does, does God need something from us? God has everything. He he has everything he needs. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's got everything he needs. Why would he involve us in his work? Because he wants us to enjoy the blessings and the benefits. It's not for his benefit. It's for ours. And, and so he lets us be involved in his work. What a joy that is. And, and listen, the, the, I remember years ago, someone was... Uh, uh, someone I knew from years ago, Pat Boots, our pastor, and, and they said, oh, I'm just miserable and I'm not happy. And I said, well, think back. When were you the happiest in your life? They said, well, I was happy as my life when I was in church and serving God and, and working a bus route. I said, well, then why don't you get back to doing that? Why don't you get back to doing what you were doing when you were happy? You're not happy because you're not doing, you're not honoring the Lord with all that you have. And you won't be happy. You'll be miserable. Joy to be involved in the work of God. Somebody says, well, I don't have very much. Well, the Bible says, he that is faithful in that which is least will be faithful in that which is much. Don't, don't think, well, I, I just have a little bit. Well, then honor God with your little bit. And when you honor God with your little bit, God says, well, I see they honor me with their little bit. I can trust them with a little more and a little more and a little more. And God will honor that. He always does. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. Someone said, procrastination is my biggest sin. It brings me so much sorrow. And I'm going to stop doing it, perhaps, tomorrow. <laughs> honor the Lord with your substance. It's a time to honor God. Every time the offering comes by, you know what it is? It's time to honor God. It's not about what, what you're putting in. It's what I'm putting in. Is that honoring to God? Honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruits of all thine increase. Whenever I put that in, you're honoring God that He has provided for you. You're honoring God that He has cared for you. You're honoring God that He's given you the health and the strength to work and earn a paycheck. And you're giving God His due honor. He told Israel in Malachi chapter 3 to prove me now. What was He saying? Trust me. Just trust me. He said, prove me. If, if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there won't be room enough to receive it. Just trust God. Honor Him with your substance. Prove God. Be a faithful steward. There, there it is. It, trust, acknowledge, and honor. I was reading one day about George MacDonald, who is a great Scottish preacher. He was talking to his son, and the conversation turned to heaven. It seems too good to be true, the son said to his dad at one point. And a smile crossed the old preacher's face. You know what he said? He said, nay, my son, it is just so good, it must be true. Not too good to be true. If it's just so good, it must be true. And listen, it is so good to serve God. It is so good to trust God. It is so good to in all your ways acknowledge Him. It is so good to honor the Lord with your substance. It's the best way to live. He can be trusted. Corey Ten Boom, most of you are familiar with her, a Dutch Christian who survived the Holocaust. She helped many Jews escape the Nazis during World War II. 
She said this statement. She said, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Trust in the Lord. She said, when the train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You, tr you sit still and trust the engineer. You sit still and trust the engineer. I encourage you today, listen, I don't know what, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what, 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 uh, where your train is on the track. Maybe you're going through the tunnel. But would you trust God? What do you have to do to have the qualities that the Lord would have us have as stewards of what He's given to us? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and honor Him with all that you have. That's the life. That's the three qualities that the Lord would have each of us to have in Him. Let's bow for prayer. Shall we, Father? I pray you'll take the truth this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the plainness of your word. As you gave us instruction here through Solomon and Proverbs chapter 3. And Lord, today, I pray you'd help each of us to take these simple admonitions. And yet, Lord, how profound they would be if we'd live them out in our life. To trust with all our heart. To acknowledge you in all our ways. And to honor you with all that we have. All of our substance. Lord, what an impact that could make in our lives. What an impact it could make in the lives of those who are unbelievers. And Lord, I pray if any in the room today has never put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior, they'd come to trust Him as their Savior today. I pray Your will will be done in each and every life. Spirit of God, minister to people now as only You can. May holy decisions be made for You today. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. But I wonder this morning how many folks in the room would say, Pastor, if, if I died this morning, I know for sure that I would go to heaven. I know I have eternal life because there's a time in my life when I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And my faith and trust is in Jesus this morning. And I know that I have eternal life. I know I'll go to heaven when I die. Here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up for a moment that I may see it? Say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put it down. Is there somebody here today and would say, Pastor, I don't know for sure that if I died, I'd go to heaven. I don't have that confidence in my heart. I, I don't know that I have eternal life. Would you let me pray for you? Would you slip your hand up and put it back down and say, Pastor, pray for me this morning? I'm not sure that I'm a Christian. I'm not sure I'm saved. All right. The message was to believers today. To those who were children of God, were stewards of what God's given to us, those three qualities that God desires we have. Trusting in Him with all our heart. Acknowledging Him in all our ways. Honoring Him with all we have. I wonder how many believers today, how many children of God would say, Preacher, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart today. I, I want these qualities in my life to be pleasing to the Lord. Pastor, God dealt with my heart this morning. Would you slip your hand up and say, pray for me, Pastor? Amen. Amen. That's good. All right, you may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart this morning. I want you to respond to Him today. Just bow the knee and say, God, I'm going to trust you with all my heart. God, I'm going to acknowledge you in all my ways. God, I'm going to honor you with all that I have and set out to do it. It's a, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God has dealt with your heart. You respond to Him this morning. If you're here today and you never received Christ, when others come to pray, would you come? We'll have someone take a Bible and show you how you can know you're on your way to heaven. If you're saved and never been scripturally baptized, you ought to come and say, Pastor, I want to be baptized. I want to be obedient to God. Whatever it is that the Lord's dealing with your heart about, obey Him this morning. Father, have your way now in this invitation time. I thank you for speaking to the hearts of people this morning. And Father, I pray your will will be done now in this invitation. 
May holy decisions be made for you. And may we leave this room a group of believers dedicated to trusting in you with all our heart, acknowledging you in all our ways, and honoring you with, our, with all that we have, all of our substance. So, Lord, may you meet with us now in these next few minutes. And I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. She plays by the Bob's going to sing the invitation hymn. God has spoken to your heart. Respond have to him this morning. Own way, Lord. That's right. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way. Absolute sway, fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. Father in heaven, we bow before you now in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this morning. I thank you again for your word, and thank you for each one that's made their way to the service today. We do lift up those unable to be with us this morning, that you would put your healing hand upon them, uh, that they'd be able to be back with us very soon. And Lord, I pray now that we'll leave this place. You'll give us a good afternoon and prepare us for what you have for us in the evening service. And Lord, I pray that each of us would be doers of the word and not hearers only. But Lord, these these three commands, these three admonitions that you've given us in Proverbs 3, which stay with us and be ever in our heart and our mind as we go through our lives, Lord. Help us to trust in you with all our heart, acknowledge you in all our ways, and honor you with all that we have. We love you. We pray you'll give us a great afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob? I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joined heads with Jesus as we travel this sun. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You are dismissed. We'll see you tonight. <laughs>